your hand upon each and every person in a special way. We just want to give you all glory and honor and praise. We thank the Lord, the God of heaven, that we can come before his presence with thanksgiving in our heart. And Lord, we ask you now to bless this time as we come together and as we adore you. We come in a, a time of adoration before you as we glorify you, praise you, and honor you. Thank you, Lord God, for answering our prayers. Thank you for helping us. We give you the glory and honor in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen, amen. Yes, amen. Amen.
in the month of March. March the second will have a birthday. Can you imagine we're going in the month of March right now? Wow. And then we got our Bible study Wednesday night from 6 30 7 30. A lot of people have been coming out to it. We appreciate you coming out to our Bible study, my man. March 14th, Daylight Savings Time begins. I wonder when they're ever going to quit this and just leave it at one time. You would think it probably costs them millions of dollars to change the time. How many figure that out? Probably millions of dollars. And I was thinking, if they wanted to save money, there's where I would start right there. I'd put it 30 minutes one way or the other and just leave it permanently. But you know what? That makes too much sense for the rest of the world to catch on. What do you think? That just makes too much sense. So we'll just let it go. <laughs> March 23rd, me and Sister Pruitt be gone a few days. We're going to go up to uh, Pullman, if I could pull it out of my brain, am I right? <laughs> Pullman. So our daughter is wanting us to come up and visit with her. And uh, so anyway, it's her birthday. We're going to go and celebrate it with her. So we'll be gone in a few days. We're lining some and filling in for me that way. Hey! The story of the kindergarten. A kindergarten teacher was observing her classroom as the children drew pictures. The teacher would occasionally walk around and see each child's artwork. As she approached one of the little girls who was working especially hard, she asked what the drawing was. The little girl told her, I'm drawing God. But sweetly, the teacher replied, no one actually knows what God looks like. Automatically, the little girl continued drawing and said, well, they certainly will know in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> they know what God looks like in a minute. Sister put that in there. I thought it was the best way. Thank you. Anyway, you just let her know she's doing a good job on that bullet. Yeah. Right? Let her know, all right? She does a good job on that bullet. Praise the Lord. I believe Brother Lyman's going to come and read scripture to you today. Or did I miss any birthdays yet? I think all the birthdays are done. Brother Lyman. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Roseford. One of many uh, cities in Oregon and other places to respond to the churches on Kansas Church. Okay, I see some whispers going on back here, so I know you're not hearing me too well. We serve an awesome God. We just say Amen. And there's an empty chair over here. John sits there normally, and he was in our men's uh, uh, prayer meeting Tuesday, and he was there, and the pastor prayed specifically for him. But Thursday, he was to go to the hospital for surgery. Uh, he's been he's been through this, the chemotherapy and all that's necessary for that. And when the, they did a surgery on his intestine, uh, I think it was Thursday morning, <laughs> they didn't find anything. No, that's a free. That's a free. Right. What an awesome Woo! watching us on when he watches us here this morning. He's going to be raising his hands and praising the Lord. I'm sure of that. Uh, I'd like to share with you uh, we've been a few 
Sundays, uh, reading out of the second tip, uh, Second Peter, and uh, we're going to continue reading from Second Peter this morning, chapter three, and we're going to pick it up this morning at verse thirteen. Second uh, Peter, chapter three. No, second. Yeah, <laughs> pardon me. I'm trying to uh, behind. Me. When you get to be my age, it's hard to. Oh. <laughs> 2 Peter chapter 3, we're going to start at verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Are you expecting that to happen? Yes. Amen. Are you looking forward to it to happen? Because that's, that's part of our blessed hope. The resurrection is our blessed hope. But we look forward to that new heaven and that new earth. Continuing on, verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look forward, uh, look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. God's an awesome God. Yes, he is. And he Amen. can make us sight make us without spot or wrinkle. And so if the ushers would come forward this morning to receive this morning the tithes and offerings. Jacob, why don't you come on up here and help me offer this morning? That's okay. He's a kid. Kids can get away with that word. Uh, let us pray over the <laughs> Lord, uh, we give you thanks and praise for your provisions for each one of us this past week. And Lord, uh, we we pay our tithes, tithes to you. We bring our offerings to you, Lord. And speaking of offerings, we've almost got enough in now for the overhead projector. Just, uh, you know that, Lord. I share that for the congregation. And Lord, uh, would you add blessing upon blessing? to the gifts and the givers alike. For we ask for this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Thank you for the Bible. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we got all of that done. Now we can uh, do a little picking and grinning here. Is that all right? God is so good.
good. I appreciate the Lord. How about you guys? I think we got time probably for one more. How about Brother Brother Ray doing one, all right? Maybe once Brother John gets back, he might start feeling like doing his harmonica again. You guys pray for him. He's going to do it an awful lot. And we were praying for him. We were praying for him that last Tuesday that the tumor would have been eradicated. And sure enough, it was, wasn't it? God heard our prayer. We appreciate the Lord. Brother Ray.
that's you, but mine's off. I told you, sorry, man. I don't know what it is. I only lost your eardrums on that one. Didn't have one to lose. Dang. <laughs> Dear church family, son-in-law has had his cancer surgery and all went well. Son Tom has had another operation and to place a dysfunctional pacemaker and pacemaker in and but in a month or so he has to have more done. She said Merle and I are fine. Just sending our, well, offerings and things like that to the church. And just wanted you guys to know that they're praying for us. So this is from Sister June Hathaway. All right? So you guys get a chance to let them. Hathaways know that you appreciate them, especially if you see. They're kind of been staying kind of way because of the COVID thing. Until we can get a, well, a vaccine. I heard Johnson Johnson came out with them vaccine a few days ago announced it and they said it's a one shot vaccine which is pretty cool huh yeah. uh, most of the people have been taking the two shot they'll take one shot and then two months later they'll take another shot they said the second shot when they take it it's worse than the first time around so maybe this one shot will be like the flu shot how many know how it is was strange because of the vaccines and because of all the people have been inside, the flu season has just about been eradicated. There's been no flu viruses at all this year, hardly at all. So it's, it's strange how one vaccine, or I should say one uh, virus overtakes another one. And in this case, that's what has happened here. So because COVID's came into the picture now, the flu virus has just about been eradicated. Um, less than, very few, less percentage-wise. I forgot what the actual reading of it was or the actual report, but it wasn't that many at all have become infected with the flu this year. That's one good thing. Can you say amen to that? <laughs> and uh, I do know some people came down with bronchitis and things of that nature. Uh, but uh, praise God for the, for the uh, especially for the report on that flu. I was, normally I get into the uh, doctor and take the flu shot. I kind of wonder if that might have been it. Nobody took the flu shot this year. Maybe that's why they didn't get it. What do you think? That's just me being a, a thought, you know, came to my mind. Uh, some people say they get the flu shot, they get the flu. So I don't know. Maybe that's played into it. I'm not a medical doctor. I can't really tell you one way or the other. But I can say this, that the Lord is on our side. Can you say amen to that? And blessed be his name, Brother Ray. Sure is. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Would you pray with me today as we begin this part of our service? Oh, Lord, I pray right now for those who have been afflicted. I pray for Sister Dina, even though some didn't mention her name in prayer. I heard that she has, hasn't been feeling this, that well this week as well. Uh, I had to go to the uh, ER the other night, and we're just praying for her, her family, that God, that you won't just remember Sister Dina. And Lord, have your hand up on her. And we're praying for all these other families that were mentioned, Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. And Lord, we pray for their needs and all their desires. We pray that God will uh, allow these that have been sick and afflicted to become healed in the name of Jesus. I just speak out healing right now in that name of Jesus all across this ministry right now, wherever people are listening to it. 
that if they'll just reach out and ask God to bring healing in their life, I believe God will do that healing right now. Just ask it in Jesus' name. Asking for a healing, a miracle for your life. If you do this, I believe God will do that. He will answer this request for you. And Lord, I thank you right now for all those that have been praying and asking for healing and miracles been take place. Lord, we've been seeing miracle after miracle take place. And that's because of God. Only God can do that. And we thank the Lord for allowing it to happen. And this little church has been taking place, Lord. Lord, thank you again. We appreciate the Lord for what he's been doing for us. We thank you again in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. 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 The last statistics I had, about 16, 1,700 people have been tuning in, not only on the TV ministry, but also other things we've been doing in the church. So about 16, almost 1,700 people have been viewing and watching. Would you give the Lord a clap off? My, we're already a mega church. How about that? How about that? <laughs> it's amazing what God can do. Can you say amen? amen? So with all the things that we've been doing in the New Horizon ministry, about 16, 1,700 people, 1,800, maybe it was 1,800, have been tuning in and watching not only the television portion of it, but been going to our website. And so we want to encourage you to do that. Do that. Share the button. When you watch this show or this service, amen, I don't want to call it a show. It's a, it's a church service. When you watch this church service, share it to somebody. Give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Would you do that? Give them the gospel of the Lord. Uh, if I've ever seen a world in this day and time that needed, it, that needed Jesus, it is now. Yeah. The world needs Jesus right now. America needs Jesus. Can you say amen? amen? America needs the Lord. And so I just want to say thank the Lord. And I just appreciate everything he's doing for us. Let us look. My soul longs for thee. How many love that picture? Isn't that just a beautiful picture? I say a picture is worth a thousand words. I believe that. My soul longs for thee. As we continue... As the deer pants, the Bible says in Psalm 42, for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. And so as the deer pants for water, we must pant for the Lord. Can you say amen to that? Amen. We must want to be God's desire. How many want to be God's desire? Amen. amen. You want to be God's desire, so do I. And the best way to do that is to pant after him. Can you say amen to that? Has the deer or has the dog even pants for water? Sometimes I'll hear Buttercup get up in the middle of the night. And the next thing I know, she's in there just lapping up the water. And just sucking the bowl dry. What do you say? And so I'll hear her. And sometimes I'll hear her two or three times a night. And the other night she got up so many times I made her lay back down. I said, it's time for you to go back to bed. Right now. <laughs> and so I, I kind of spoiled her. I, I hold her cover up. I says, come here now. And I want you to get under your cover. I'll fold it in half. And then I'll cover her up. How many believe I spoiled her? What do you say? A little bit. I've kind of That's spoiled okay. her. That's okay. And so anyway, I can hear her at times panting for the water. What do you say? And this is the way we need to be when we're in the house of God. We need to pant for the Spirit of the Lord to come into our lives, to fill us of that emptiness that we've been going through all week long. As you and I begin to pant for the Spirit to come into our lives, guess what God will do? He will fill our heart up with it. And as this spirit comes back into our life, I don't know about you, but I've shared to you, these are lightning bolts, amen? You want them to be powered up, you're going to have to raise them up. Say amen or oh me. And when you're in the presence of the Lord, these lightning rods should go up. What do you say about that? And as the spirit begins to come down, it energizes our life 
with joy and peace of the Holy Spirit in our life. I don't know about you, but when you and I leave today, we should have more peace in our heart. When you and I leave today, we should have more love in our heart. When you and I leave today, we should have more faith in our heart. When you and I leave today, we should have more of the fullness of God in our life. If you come dry and leave dry, it's because you're not panting after the Lord. You're not panting after God. Can you say amen? <laughs> I know there's a lot of preachers that don't preach these things. I understand that. This is probably, you probably read this scripture a thousand times and never realized what it really means until it starts to become revealed by the Holy Spirit. And so as the Spirit becomes more enabled in our lives, guess what? It makes our life easier. Guess what? If you're married, guess what? Your husband sees that you're happier or your wife sees that you're happier. Say amen or oh amen. amen. Your children see that you're happier. Amen or oh me. And you and I begin to live that life that God wants us to live. In victory. Victory, can you say amen? amen. You and I need victory of Jesus Christ. We need victory in the Lord. We need victory to make it through this dry and long spell that's came into our lives. You and I need to pant for the Holy Spirit. We need to pant for the Lord. We need to pant for Him. Someone say amen for yeah. me. And give the Lord a clap off your today. So as the deer pants for the brook, so pants my soul for you, O God. As we look at the word pant, it means what? To breathe quickly. It means to breathe quickly. I don't know about you, but you and I should be sucking the Spirit in quickly. Like that, can you say amen? Give me more of the Spirit, God. Give me more of your Holy Spirit. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me, the psalmist said. O Lord, take it not away from me. Draw nigh to the Lord, Jesus said, and he will draw nigh to you. Come closer to the Lord, and he will come closer to you. You and I need to reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by, the old song says. He's not too busy to hear your heart cry. I feel like the problem with a lot of Christians today is they're not panting. They're, they're not breathing the spirit back into their life. And especially when it's so bountiful and so plenteous about us. I don't know about, I don't know about you, but a lot of people were worshiping this morning. And as you begin to worship, the Spirit begins to come up on you. Say amen or amen. amen. I don't know about you, but the more of God in your life, the more of you is out of your life. Say amen. amen. Hello, come on. The more of God is in you, the more of you are out of you. I want more of me out and more of God in. Yes, amen. This is so important. The word bad means to spasmodically can you say amen it means to cast to heave to huff I don't know about you but people are heaving and huffing and, and puffing on narcotics today looking for an answer looking for peace looking for joy and you'll never find it in the world you won't find it in the world but you can find it in the Holy Spirit can you say amen you can find it in the Spirit of the Lord People out there heaving and puffing and, and sucking the world into their lives. Let me tell you something, my friends. You're not going to find God that way. But you will find him when you spasmodically suck in the spirit of God, which is the spirit of life. The spirit of holiness. Amen? How many getting this today? Well, give the Lord a clap. <laughs> it means to gas. It means to heave. It means to heart. What else does it mean? It literally means to be out of breath for God. Samson, when he slew the Philistines, he was so out of breath after slaying a thousand of them. 
that he fell to the ground and he was bone dry. And then he spoke to the Lord. He said, am I going to die with these Philistines? And the very head, the ax that he used, the bone, as he slung it to the ground, the Bible teaches that, that God caused the brook to come out of the ground. And the Bible says he refreshed himself with the waters that came out of the ground. Let me tell you something. God has sent water after water. God has sent tidal wave after tidal wave. God has sent brook after brook, river after river. If you don't get in and drink it, it's your own fault. Don't pant after what God sends you. It's your own fault. You can't blame someone else because you're so reluctant to kneel down and drink from his brook, from his river, from his waters. Can you say amen? Other related words are to hunger, to long for, to pine after, to thirst, to desire, to want, to wish for God to come more into your life. Oh, God, help us. We need revival. We need revival in America. Someone say that. Amen. Amen. We need revival in Coke Hill. Someone say that. Amen. We need revival in Coos Bay. Someone say that. Amen. We need revival in Myrtle Point. Someone say that. Amen. We need revival in Powers. Someone say that. Amen. We need revival in Bandon and Reedsport. Come on, Christian. We need it in Roseburg. We need revival. We need revival. We need to revive ourselves. Why? Because we need to become like a deer that pants for water. We need to begin to thirst after righteousness again. Amen, Earl. Oh, I got to go. As believers, we should be thirsting after God. Psalm 42, verse 2, my... So thirst for God, for the living God, when shall I come and appear before him or before God, it says. So as believers, we should be thirsting for God, not only to hunger after him, but to thirst after God. Let me tell you what, when it's all done and said, you'll have to stand before him. Everybody here will have to stand before God. Wouldn't you rather stand before God on the right side of him? Instead of the wrong side. Wouldn't you rather stand before God on the right side. Instead of the wrong side. Is it important that you and I thirst now. And hunger now. Because when we appear before him. And if he tells us depart from me. Thou worker of iniquity. We'll never be able to thirst. Or hunger for him again. Is it important. That we thirst for God now. Can you say amen. God hears the prayers of the righteous. Psalm 4, verse 1. Hear me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. You have relieved me in my distress. Have mercy on me. Hear my prayer. Hear my prayer. How come, how come our prayers are not being answered? Maybe we're not drawing close enough to God. Maybe we need to come closer to God. Where God can hear our prayers. Can you say amen? amen? How can God hear our prayers if we're not speaking them loud enough? Or if we're not close enough to say them? Well, Pastor, that makes just too much common sense. <laughs> Hello. And that's what the world lacks is common sense. My goodness, is Sister Pritz fixing a roast dinner, which she did yesterday. If I can't hear her calling me, guess what? I won't be able to enjoy that roast dinner. <laughs> Sometimes they text me and it still doesn't work. But 
boy, let me tell you something. I hear her when she gets over over my over my man cave, and guess what? She starts pounding on the floor. I know who it is. Summon me. <laughs> <laughs> It's my own fault if I don't get up and go to that summoning. It's my own fault if I reluctantly stand back and say, well, I don't need to eat right now. It's my own fault. I can't blame it on you if I don't eat at the dinner table. I can't blame it on you if I'm not Feasting on that which is prepared before me. God has given us dinner after dinner. He's given us water after water. How can God hear our prayers if we're not close enough to ask him? To answer our prayers. Pastor, that's just too simple. That makes too much sense. But we live in a world today that just doesn't make sense anymore. What seems to be good is evil. What seems to be evil is good. I'm trying not to meddle, but it's coming all over me. You vote in one class of people, and they say they're going to do this, and they don't do it. Say amen. Or amen. amen. Vote in another class, and we're going to do this. When you vote them in, they don't do that. Their yes is a yes. Their no is a no. Well, we got the power. We're just going to do what we want to do. Let me tell you something. God ain't pleased with that. God said you shall know the truth. And the truth shall what? Make you free. Everybody will be judged. They say rain is the teardrops of angels weeping over us. I mean like that. Isn't that pretty? Rain is the teardrops of angels weeping over us. Psalm 42, verse 3, my tears have been my food day and night. Well, they continually say to me, where is your God? Where is God? People cried out the land right now, where is God? Where are you, God? Why aren't you answering my prayers? Where are you, God? He's here. You just don't know what his voice sounds like anymore. Because you drowned it out with the world and its temptations. Amen or oh me. God's voice is vivid and powerful. But we can't hear it if we're not tuned into it. I love to listen to the radio. If I don't tune in the channel, it's nothing but static. There you go, Pastor. You make you're just making common sense again. That's too simple. To turn the, the radio channel on the right frequency. <laughs> Hello. But if you don't tune it into God, you're going to hear nothing but static. Static. Going to hear gargling. Gargling. You name it. It's, it's nothing you want to shout home about. How many ready to tune in to God? If you want to hear from God, you have to tune into His channel. I'm coming out to you. We're all from B-I-B-L-E today. Can you say amen? amen. K-B-I-B-L-E. <laughs> Bible. I love that. How about you? 
I'm surprised no one came out with a channel like that yet. <laughs> My tears have become food day and night. Why did the psalmist say that? He said, because I'm crying out to God and I can't hear him. I don't know where he's at. He's probably praying prayers that go up and hit the roof and fall back down. How many of you said prayers like that? Go up. And hit the roof and come back down. You know why? Because you're not tuned into his frequency. You're not tuned into his channel. Hello. He's got another channel. It's called K J E S U S. <laughs> That's the best channel you could hook up to. I guarantee you, that channel will get rid of all that garbage, all that static. But you got to tune into J E S U S. Got to tune into it, brother. You know that radio don't turn on all by itself. <laughs> You have to get up there and turn that baby on. Come on now. If you want something to come out of it, you got you to gotta use a little bit of energy on your part. A little bit of effort on your part to tune in that channel. Not going to tune in by itself. But when you tune it in, some of the most glorious things begin to happen in your lives. Am I telling the truth here today? Mm -hmm. Why? Because you begin to pant as the deer panted for the waters. As you and I begin to pant and thirst, then you're going to see more of God being revealed through your lives. Amen. Or Amen. Amen. How many of you right now feel like, man, I need a Holy Ghost bath? Can you say amen? amen. <laughs> I need to be dipped in the Holy Ghost. Yes. I feel so dirty, Pastor. That's what you need. You need a Holy Ghost bath. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, Psalm 34, 19 says, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. I'm not saying you're not going to get in trouble. Yeah, you're going to get in trouble. The devil don't like you going to church. He don't like you watching this broadcast. He don't want, he don't want you hearing all this. Why? Because this makes sense. This isn't confusing. This stuff will help you get to heaven. You think the devil wants you to tune into this? No. So many are the afflictions of the righteous. One sister's husband started coming the last couple weeks, and look what the old devil is trying to do, trying to pound it and stop it. She, you know, I should say he don't want her husband to receive the Lord and to receive the fullness of the Lord in his life, the blessings of the Lord. That's why when you start bringing the people to church, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Man, he's going to jump on your bandwagon and he's going he to knock all the wheels off of that bandwagon. How does that sound? You want the devil to take notice of you? Go around and start inviting everybody to church. Yeah, go out. Let me, let me ask you all to prove this. Go out and start inviting people to church and pray with them and lead them to Jesus Christ. And guess what? The devil's going to come right after you. A lot of us old Christians, we get kind of soft after a while. Yeah. 
We don't go out knocking on doors or making phone calls or or seeing somebody that we don't even know and saying, are you, are you all right? Come on. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. You want to see your family come unglued? Start living for God and be pumped up in the spirit. But guess what God is doing while the enemy is attacking you? He's drawing your family closer and closer to him to usher in a revival into their lives, to usher in healing into their lives, to bring about a wonderful work of Jesus Christ in them. Amen? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Believers will suffer because of Christ. We're going to encounter setbacks. Trials, temptations. We're going to be afflicted. I don't know about you, but this has been enough but a week of temptation after temptation after temptation after temptation. But I'll tell you what, I'm stronger today than I was a week ago. Can you say amen? Because I didn't yield to that temptation. How about you? See, it's a setback when I yield to it. It becomes a setback when I yield to that temptation. But when I don't yield to it and I tell the devil, get away from me. Stop bothering me. We're going to encounter setbacks. We're going to have trials and temptations. We'll go back. <laughs> We're going to be afflicted. But we shall be what? Overcomers too. Can you say amen? We shall be overcomers too. God promised you you're going to be an overcomer. This is a long one today. I'm sorry, but it's a good one. Philippians 4 verse 12. I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer me, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm going to make it because Christ did it for me. I'm going to overcome because he first overcame. I'm a new creation because he created me to be a new one. I am what I am in Christ. Even though the temptation has come, the trials have come, God has still given me power and authority over it all to be an overcomer. The Bible says I shall become an overcomer because of the word of my testimony and the blood of Jesus Christ. I am an overcomer because of the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. Amen? As a deer thirsts for water, we must thirst after righteousness. Thirst for good things of God. Never give up or give in. Romans 8, verse 37. Yet in all things, these things, we're more than conquerors through him who loves us. Who loves us? God does. Who cares about us? God does. Who's given us power to be more than conquer? God has. Yes. You're saying, I'm going through it. You've been through it. You've been going but guess what? You're still breathing. That means you're going to become an overcomer. That means, guess what? You're going to become successful. Why? Because you panted for the Lord. You and I panted. As the deer panted for water, you and I must pant it for the Lord. Oh, I love that picture. How about you? Would you pray with me? Father God, we thank you for allowing us to be here today. We know there's people watching this Facebook ministry, and we appreciate them doing that. I'm praying that now, not only they'll watch it, but that they'll share it. They'll share it around where other people will engage and watch it. 
There's people watching it that we don't even know. We don't even know who they are. But we're praising God that they're tuning in. We're praising God that they're listening in on us. We're praising God that God will help them. And God will allow them to draw closer to him. As they pant for the water, so they will pant for righteousness as well. Lord, I pray for them all. Right now, Lord, if any of them, if they don't know Jesus Christ, maybe all they got to do is speak up and say, I want to be a Christian today. Lord, help me become a Christian. All you have to do is confess Jesus Christ into your life. And the Bible says, call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. Not only you, but your family. The Bible teaches us. For this is what Paul told the jailer. When he came out, he was shaken violently. Feverishly he was shaken. And he said, sir, what must I do to be saved? He said, believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you and your family shall be saved. And that very moment, the jailer and his whole household become Christians. Later on, Paul took them to a body of water and baptized every one of them. So if you get saved, you need to find your local church. And you need to find a pastor or someone that will baptize you. You need to be baptized. Can you say that? Why? Because God cares about you. In the wonderful name of Jesus, amen, amen. Would you stand with me today as we prepare for this message? Our gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come together. Walk with us and be with us, Lord. Go with each and every one of these people, God. Hear their prayer requests, oh God. Hear their prayer requests. Hear them, O oh God, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for coming today.